not all stories have happy endings. Hey, what's up guys? Wes here, welcome back to the channel. And after we've seen the Xbox game showcase, I figured that I'd take this time to discuss it and everything that we saw and what my thoughts are. So first of all, I think overall the conference was a little bit underwhelming. I think that they could have shown a lot more gameplay and I feel like that was what was lacking with this whole game showcase. You would think that, you know, a next generation reveal would show off the actual gameplay and, you know, the capabilities of the next generation console rather than just like, you know, a, a bit of gameplay in like, like cinematic trailers for the rest of the event. So I was kind of disappointed in that aspect, but the games that we did get to, you know, see that Xbox Game Studios is working on is pretty awesome. We got Fable, we got the new game from Obsidian Entertainment, Awoken, and all of that looks incredible. But overall, I feel like the conference was not as good as it could have been. The potential was there, but I feel like Microsoft kind of blundered it. We were supposed to see like some crazy, you know, shock and awe mic drop moments and we didn't really see much of that at all. I mean, Fable was big, but we've been all speculating that, you know, Fable was gonna be announced today. And of course we saw the State of Decay cinematic trailer. We got to see Forza Motorsport. But besides that, like there wasn't really anything like brand new that was like super incredibly amazing that was gonna shock us. I really feel like Microsoft kind of played it too safe. At E3 2019, they talked about how they acquired all of these new studios. And it's like, we're not really seeing much progress with these new studios, like actually doing stuff. Obviously development takes time, but just give us like a breadcrumb, something that they're working on with these new games. And I feel like they just aren't doing that. They're being overly silent and it's almost like, History is starting to repeat itself from the last generation. They've had so many years to develop brand new IPs and we're not really getting any new IPs that are announced at all. Now you can argue that it's much safer for a company and a publisher like Microsoft and Xbox Game Studios to release games that have been previously made that are already established IPs. It's a lot safer for their investment, but why not take a risk? I feel like the only company or the only game developer at Microsoft Studios or you know Xbox Game Studios that's actually working on new projects is rare, you know? Like we got to see Everwild, which is, looks amazing. We didn't get to see any gameplay and we probably won't for another few years. And that's only if they actually release the game in early access. I have a feeling that, that Everwild is gonna have a similar development cycle as Sea of Thieves, but I hope that's not the case. I think this game is gonna be a little bit more focused on like, you know, first person, uh, you know, adventure game, hopefully maybe like a little bit of survival aspects, uh, maybe a co-op experience. I hope it's not as like, you know, crazy as Sea of Thieves was, but I think that they need to play it safe they need to release a single player game not something that's like super ambitious like they did with sea of thieves and we kind of got let down but i think it is very ambitious that you know rare is actually making new games and i really hope to see that same thing applied to the rest of the xbox game studios umbrella obviously obsidian entertainment they're good for making new games they made the outer worlds they're making awoken they've got grounded coming out and obsidian is like the powerhouse that is you know a part of the microsoft game studios so at least that's a plus we got to see some cinematic trailers for, you know, Stalker 2. We got to see Psychonauts 2. And then we got like a bunch of stuff that was like kind of irrelevant. You know, we got Fantasy Star Online 2, which is okay, but like they, they featured Tetris Effect Connected. Who in their right mind at Microsoft thought it was a good idea to release an Xbox game showcase that's supposed to show the fidelity of the next generation console that they're selling to us next or like this holiday? Who thought it was a good idea to you know reveal tetris like i stand tetris don't get me wrong but like how is that game supposed to show the capabilities in the fidelity that is the next generation xbox series x it's not and another thing like where the hell was the series s i thought that this was the you know the big announcement for lockhart is that mean lockhart is now dead on arrival is, are we not actually getting that are we just going to get shipped you know the series x and they're going to call it a day i i don't understand what microsoft is doing with this event i feel like it was pretty underwhelming for that reason I really hope that there's more that they're going to offer in the future, but we are getting to the nitty gritty. It is nearly August of 2020. The new consoles come out in November and December and October, and we have yet to know the price, the release date or anything, or the launch lineup for all of these new games that are supposed to launch alongside the Series X and the PS5. We don't know a price. We don't know a release date. How is it that we're in August and we have yet to find that crucial information? These consoles are going to be premium prices and they will 
will be a premium experience from what we've seen so far with the PlayStation 5 and the Series X kind of sorta, uh, but still like we don't have this information. We need it. People have to save money and they're not able to because these consoles aren't gonna be probably revealed until August to even September. Now I'll give them a pass if they are planning to do another reveal event for the price of the Xbox Series X and if PlayStation is doing the same thing. But right now it's like a game of cat and mouse or even like checkers where, you know, neither person is ready to move their back row. Guys, the time is coming to an end. Like we, we need to know these details or there's no way in hell that these people are going to be able to afford these consoles, especially if their parents are getting ready to buy it for their kids on holiday. You know, the holidays are coming, so they've got to be able to give us some information very soon. And I, for one, am a little bit pissed off that they have not revealed that stuff yet. Now, obviously I don't blame Xbox or PlayStation. You know, they're waiting for somebody to make an announcement first so that the other person can undercut them. And it's just how the, you know, the world works. But at the end of the day, time is ticking and someone is going to have to make a move. I feel like the first person to reveal the price in a pre-order page is likely going to, you know, have a really good head start for this next generation. And I have a feeling as of lately, it's probably going to be PlayStation that jumps on that train first, because if they can, you know, release the pre-orders hella quick, then that could mean a lot of people will just go ahead and pre-order PS5 without even having a thought about the Xbox. Now, one thing that I will give credit to Xbox that is pretty cool about this conference is they did say that every game that was showcased besides one that I'm probably going to roast in a second will be available day one on Game Pass, or if it's a free to play game, then it'll be obviously free. But it's really cool that the barrier of entry for every game on Xbox is literally just spend $9.99 to get Game Pass and you could play the new Xbox game. You could play the new Halo game with the exception being the Crossfire X campaign. Yes, I saw the fine print and I hope you guys did too, because the campaign doesn't come out with Game Pass. You'll have to buy that separately. So that's kind of annoying, but hey, every other game is available on Game Pass, which is really good for that. Now, another thing that we have to talk about is the fact that all of the games we saw during the Xbox, you know, reveal and the game showcase are also available on PC. Now you're probably asking yourself, what is the reason that I should buy an Xbox Series X? And that's a very good question that I don't think was answered today. Like for instance, me, I own a gaming PC. So every game that is available that was showcased today, I'll be able to play on my PC. So they have to figure out how they're gonna actually give a value proposition for the Series X, or people are just gonna slowly build up their money and they're just gonna buy a PC and not really pay for an Xbox Series X or you know the potential S that comes out. Now, I will say I personally will be buying a Series X just because I like the fact that it's going to be a smaller console that will be extremely powerful and does have a 4k blu-ray player which is really awesome for me and i think you know being able to move that around my house and taking it to like you know whenever i travel is super awesome and i think for that reason i will get use out of the series x but for the people that only have a gaming pc they really have no reason to buy a series x they, this gives them no reason to it gives them a reason to buy a playstation 5 because there's new exclusive games on there and it gives them a reason to buy a nintendo switch because the portability aspect but there's really no reason to buy a Series X. But I think it's obvious that Xbox knows that. And that's why they're kind of pivoting more towards the cloud streaming and they're going for the subscription-based gaming. They want to be the Netflix of gaming. And I got a feeling that in the next five years, we're going to see Game Pass come to Nintendo Switch. It's going to be on your phones and it's going to be available even on a PlayStation device. And that is a bold prediction, but I've got a feeling that it'll happen. Phil Spencer is looking for where the most money is at, and it is in the future of cloud gaming and subscription services. And he knows that, and that's why their focus on the Xbox Series X is mainly to keep that part of their consumer base happy and to continuously buy products. At the end of the day, that is a big enthusiast market and people will always buy the new Xbox. But I will say, that Microsoft really does not need to compete in a console war. They're not at war against Nintendo. They're not at war against PlayStation. At the end of the day, if Microsoft really wanted to, they could buy both Sony and Nintendo, both in cash tomorrow, the bag in their hand. They could drop it off at Nintendo. They could drop it off at PlayStation and they could own both of those companies tomorrow in cash. But that would require the FTC to approve that and allow it, which they likely wouldn't. But still, they have that much money. They really don't need to pay attention to this console war. They see the big picture with that big money bag that is the game subscription and game streaming service. 
that is our boy phil spencer's master plan and i think that's going to come to fruition it's just going to take time i think these next few years and even probably five to six years are going to be a big struggle but once you start to see the age of game streaming with project x cloud you know come to the forefront of the industry just like netflix did and they destroyed blockbuster and, and all that stuff we're going to see that same thing happen but it's going to be in the game industry and xbox is kind of aligning themselves for that future which is forward thinking it's going to suck for the next five to ten years most likely but yo guys that's going to be all for this video i want to know what your take is what was your thoughts on the xbox game showcase this year did you like it is it underwhelming are you going to be buying a series x are you going to be picking up a ps5 let me know in the comment section below guys thank you once again for watching this video and until next time it's been wes be sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel with your notifications on and i will see you on the next video goodbye everybody